Hello and welcome to this 591 Lab CompTIA Linux Plus XK0-005 Review Q&A with Demo Lab. My name is Philip and I want to thank you for choosing 591 Lab. Here is some brief information about 591 Lab. It's pronounced as 591 Lab. 591 Lab is a top IT training and certification exam brand in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan and Singapore. We offer exam preparation experience for various certifications in Cisco, CompTIA, Huawei, Aruba, Juniper, Palo Alto and Fortinet exam tracks. In today's episode, we're going to focus on five sample questions and answers from the current CompTIA Linux Plus XK0-005 exam. And this is going to be followed up with a demo lab covering each of the topics from the various questions. Our first question, a Linux administrator wants to find out whether files from the wget package have been altered since they were installed. Which of the following commands will provide the correct information? We have four available options. We need to select one. The correct answer is D. We would use the RPM command with a hyphen capital V option and then specify the name of the package. Our second question, when trying to log in remotely to a server, a user receives the following message. And you'll notice it says here, connection to local host closed. The server administrator is investigating the issue on the server and receives the following output. Which of the following is causing the issue? We have four options available to us here. We need to select one, and the correct answer is D. The user has the wrong shell assigned to the account. If we take a look at output 1, it says user. And at the end, it says for the shell slash bin is set to false. So the user would not be able to log in successfully to this system because no shell has been assigned to this user. Our third question, a Linux administrator created a file system. Which of the following files must be updated to ensure the file system mounts at boot time? We have four options available to us here. And the correct answer is C. We would need to add an entry within the slash etc slash fs stop file. Our fourth question, a developer reported an incident involving the application configuration file slash etc slash httpd slash conf slash httpd dot conf that is missing from the server which of the following identifies the rpm package that installed a configuration file we have four options available to us here and the correct answer is a we would specify the rpm command hyphen with a small q which means the query followed by a small f followed by the path to the file name Our last question, after installing a new version of a package, a systems administrator noticed a new version of the corresponding .service file was installed. In order to use the new version of the .service file, which of the following commands must be issued first? And we have four options available to us here. And the correct answer is D. We would need to issue the systemctl command followed by daemon reload. And this is going to reload the system D daemon. I'm going to bring up our lab now so we can take a look at the topics covered in each of the five questions. Here within our center system, we're going to focus on the wget package. The configuration for the wget package is located in the slash etc directory. And the file name is called wget rc. Now, if someone were to make changes within this file, I'm going to go into insert mode. We're going to uncomment this option. And we're going to specify 80 megabytes. Now we're going to save our changes. 
Now, if we run the RPM command with a hyphen capital V option and specify the package name. In our case, it's going to be the WGET package. We can see we're given some clue here. And we have the path to the configuration file for the WGET package. So this is how you can verify whether the configuration file for a package has been altered by using the dash capital V option with the RPM command. Now let's focus on remotely logging in to a server using SSH. First, I look at the log files in real time. Let's verify the IP address. The current IP address for the system is 192.168.206.129 with a slash 24 bit mask. Now let's try to SSH into the system. I will use the Philip user. And we can see I have successfully SSH'd into this server. And in the background, we can see the various logs which was generated. Now if we recall on question 2, we saw a user when they tried to SSH into the server, they encountered an error. So I'm going to add that error inside of the slash etc slash pass wd file. The user at the bottom, the user Philip, has the bash shell assigned to him. So I will remove the keyword bash and I will specify the keyword false. Now let me see if our changes. Now let's turn on back the login in real time. And now let's try to SSH once again into the server. I'm going to disconnect. Now I'm going to rerun that SSH command. But this time you will notice the session was closed. This is similar to question 2 and as we can see here it says accepted the password disconnected from user Philip. And then the session was disconnected. And as we can see the error, the keyword here is false which is similar to question 2. So we would need to remove this word false and specify a shell for the user. I'll go back into insert mode. Now I'm going to specify the bash shell and save our changes. Now let's turn on back login in real time. And now let's try to SSH once again into the server. You can see the session started in the background. And this time you'll notice our connection was successful. And the session has been opened for the user Philip. And here we can see the remote session. So this is how we would troubleshoot whenever a user tries to remotely log in to a server via SSH and the connection is terminated when the user enters their password. We would want to check to see if the user has been assigned a shell. And we can quickly look at the slash etc slash pass wd file. And in our case here, we saw for the Philip user, the shell is set to slash pin slash bash. And we purposely broke it by specifying the keyword false. And when we saved our changes, we saw that we were unable to SSH into the server. Now let's take a look at the slash etc slash fstop file. If we want to add an entry for our file system to start up at boot time. We'll use the sudo command and we'll use the vim editor. 
slash etc slash fstub. I'll go into insert mode. Now the syntax of the slash etc slash fstub file. We would first need to specify the partition. As we can see, we have some examples here. We have the slash which is mounted. Now we can see the actual partition here slash dev slash mapper slash cs hyphen root there is also the slash boot mount point and this is the actual partition here and we have the swap file and this is the actual partition for the swap file and you'll notice the swap partition it's not mounted on any mount point it says none and we have defaults here for the default settings followed by zero zero the first zero is if we would like this file system to be dumped this is rarely used anymore and the last zero has to do with the file system check using the fs check command upon boot time and you'll notice they're all set to zeros so if we wanted to add an entry for example, now we would specify the mount point. Let's say it's on slash Linux plus. And we'll say it's an ext4 file system type. And now we'll specify the keyword defaults. Lastly, we'll specify 0, 0. And we can see our entry at the bottom of slash etc slash fstop file. And this is how we would work with the fstop file if we want to add or edit an entry. Next, let's take a look at how we can identify a package from a configuration file using the rpm command. So let's take a look at the slash etc directory. You can see we have a number of configuration files along with directories. So if we want to identify a package using the RPM command based on its configuration file, we can use the RPM command and specify hyphen QF. And now we would specify the path to the configuration file and it's going to identify the package for us. For example, let's say we want to find out what is the name of the package for the xattr.conf file. We need to specify the full path to the file. There we go. And now we can see the xattr.conf file belongs to the libattr package. Now we can see the version of that package. We can also look at the ssh package. And now we can see the package is called openssh-clients. This is how we can quickly identify a package from its configuration file by using the rpm command with a hyphen small q small f option. Now when we are working with systemd services that has the extension dot service as we saw in question 5 and we make changes we would need to reload the systemd daemon. So the command to reload the systemd daemon is going to be systemctl daemon hyphen reload. Now I need to specify my password. And that is going to reload the systemd daemon for us to read the new systemd.service files, which is similar to question 5, which we saw. All right, let's go back to the slides. I want to thank you all for attending today's class at 591 Lab. We hope you found the material informative and helpful. Please don't hesitate to contact us 
We appreciate your participation and look forward to seeing you in our future classes. Have a great day. My name is Philip and I want to thank you for choosing 591 Lab.